Hello again from Skip, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle. I have another real interesting project to share with you all. Once again, I took a small experiment and uh, got carried away and supersized it into a huge project. Some other friends have just uh, described this as uh, another foot warmer that I've built to keep me warm on some cold winter nights here in Canada. Before I built this heavy duty DC load, this is what I used to use for testing power supplies that I've built. It was made up of two large 5 ohm rheostats hooked in series and uh, with an old analog ammeter I would uh, adjust these rheostats up and down and uh, get quite a bit of current depending on the power supply and also a lot of heat. There was always a smell of something burning from these rheostats which uh, didn't help when you're trying to test a new circuit. Another issue with testing a power supply with this kind of load was connecting the leads. You're always getting a spark from something and uh, quite often you'd blow the pass transistors or something out of the power supply you just built. I knew I had to do something different so I used this DC switch built out of a large FET and uh, at least I got away from that part of the problem but uh, I knew something it had to be something better out there. So not wanting to spend thousands of dollars on a commercial load circuit, I was told about this little circuit that was on YouTube by Kerry Wong. His circuit was so simple it was hard to believe. The uh, magic part of the whole thing here was the power MOSFET which is designed for linear operation. The uh, power MOSFET is rated at 250 volts at 90 amps and being uh, designed for linear operation, uh, it was the answer. So I got in some parts and uh, built this little circuit up on an old heatsink I had. I already had the shunt in my parts bin and um, gave it a whirl. I was very impressed. I was using this little function generator to drive the circuit for control voltage. It only takes millivolts to uh, drive the MOSFET and uh, I was I was pulling from 0 to 20 amps out of this old power supply very easily but uh, depending on the voltage applied uh, things would get warm fairly quick. From building solid state amplifiers in the past I learned how well a copper heat spreader would work on an aluminum heat sink so I thought I would try it on this circuit. I mounted the MOSFET and the carved out circuit board for the junction points on top of the copper and uh, hooked it up and gave it a try. To determine if the copper heat spreader was going to make a big difference, I built up a temperature monitoring circuit. I had a temperature probe mounted on the copper plate by the MOSFET, which fed a PIC circuit that uh, measured the temperature and, and fed it to me on a digital display. I then set the current draw to a steady value and timed how many seconds it would take for the temperature to get to a certain value in centigrade. I timed this with and without the copper heat spreader and found that with the copper heat spreader it took four times as long to get to the same temperature reading on the uh, display. So a copper heat spreader did help. And of course adding fans to blow air over the circuit really made a huge difference so I was sold. So this is where I get carried away and supersize the whole project. One of the circuits I want to test is this analog power supply I built. It's configurable for 30 volts or 50 volts and will deliver up to 20 amps. I use it for my 6 centimeter and 9 centimeter EME amplifiers. When say I switch this thing over to 50 volts and before I haul it outside to hook up to the dish I'd like to test to make sure it works. So uh, 50 volts at 20 amps is a thousand watts. A single MOSFET for the DC load would be a little light I think for this. So uh, why not build it bigger? So I figured two MOSFETs would be better but uh, why stop there? Why not go for four and uh, really make an impressive looking circuit. So I found a much bigger heat sink located where the four shunts were going to sit with the four copper heat spreaders and the uh, small chunks of circuit board that the MOSFETs will solder to. 
the MOSFETs and the heat spreaders are screwed to the heat sink, there's no insulation in all this, so the whole heat sink will be at the voltage potential. The uh, small circuit boards on the shunts will be for instrumentation amplifiers later for the current display. So the parts are soldered down. There's uh, small heat sinks put on top of the bolt holding the MOSFETs down. And then eventually the uh, copper bus bars to interconnect all the circuitry together. Kind of got ahead of myself a little, little bit here, but uh, before this I had to build uh, some circuit boards. The uh, amplifier boards for the shunt and then the uh, control board for the four op amps that will run the MOSFETs. Finally, the uh, enclosure was built uh, using plexiglass for the sides since the whole heat sink assembly was uh, going to be sitting at uh, the voltage potential. Uh, there's a metal plate at the bottom that will hold the uh, smaller power supplies for the circuitry. And then on top, uh, four fans that will blow directly on top of the small heat sinks that are on top of the MOSFETs themselves. Next, the four MOSFET circuits were wired up to the control board on top of the uh, hingeable fan cover and uh, each individual circuit was hooked up and tested to uh, a 20 amp power supply to make sure that uh, the four MOSFET circuits were functioning the way they were supposed to. Things were going well until I uh, started doing uh, some heavy duty testing. Up to this point for all the testing the power source I was using was this Kenwood 20 amp power supply. It being current limiting, it was a perfect choice to use in case something went wrong. But I noticed once in a while it would just act up and bounce around and just make, make a terrible noise. So at this point I decided to start testing this thing on some batteries. In my ham shack I have uh, four large marine batteries I use for my 12 volt backup in my shack. And uh, I ran two long cables, number four gauge cables from the test circuit over to this battery cabinet. I had already suspected I had an oscillation and uh, one thing I did change here, I took the 4 op amp control board that was mounted up on top where the fans were and mounted them directly on top of the uh, MOSFET circuitry so the leads were shorter and not being uh, fed through uh, other, other wiring and stuff like that in case it had an effect. So this is what I was seeing. Uh, you can see the circuit here with the two large four, number four gauge wires connected to the uh, load circuit. The fluke meter on the left is measuring the applied voltage and the other fluke meter on the far right is connected to the clamp on ammeter system that's uh, on the number four gauge wire going to the batteries. The scope in the middle is uh, measuring the uh, DC voltage itself. So as I slowly increase the uh, load on the batteries from the circuit, you'll see the uh, oscillation or ringing, I call it, start and uh, really get bad right around 67 amps and then back off as I slowly turn back the, uh, cur the current pull from the batteries. So the ringing or oscillation was pretty bad. It's no wonder the Kenwood power supply would act up when it was uh, being pulled hard. I wondered if the long cables going to the battery cabinet has something to do with it, the uh, voltage drop suddenly fluctuating or something, so I, I did another test with a single battery right up on the workbench. So the test starts once again. The uh, fluke meter in the center is the clamp-on system reading directly in amps. So I slowly started turning up the current draw and uh, it seemed better, but uh, as you go up a little farther you could just start seeing it uh, beginning again. Then eventually it breaks into its full, uh, full blown oscillation one more time, only at a lot higher current this time at 156, 160 amps. So this was a head scratcher. I tried all sorts of modifications, uh, extra bypassing, uh, lead length on the op amp control board uh, rewiring, etc, etc, and nothing seemed to help. I've been discussing this with uh, Dave V7HR. 
and uh, he submitted a ticket to Analog Devices. They're the ones who uh, have this LT1636 op amp, and uh, they came back with this suggestion of adding these two components on the feedback circuit from the shunt resistor back to the op amp negative input. It was the ticket. So here we go again with the uh, test with the new components added. Again, showing the bat long battery leads going to the battery cabinet across the room and over to the test circuit on the workbench. You can see the ammeter clamp around the uh, large number four red cable for measuring the current. Once again, the fluke meter on the left is the applied voltage. The fluke meter on the far right is the ammeter hooked to the clamp on the red cable, reading in amps. Scope in the middle, of course. I just turned on the fan on the uh, load circuit, so we'll uh, start turning up the current draw. Just went past 50 amps. Just went past 100 amps and all is good so far. 150 amps and looking good. 175 amps. So we just went over 200 amps and it looks good. I'm going to stop here. So I got the load current practically back to zero again and uh, everything's settled right in. I thought I better stop before my shack charger uh, decides to blow up on me. It's never handled this kind of current before. Okay, so the main function of the DC load works very well now. So it's next on to the next part, the uh, instrumentation. Getting some kind of a display on it to show the actual current and voltage and uh, whatever else we can program into it. So I wanted a digital display on the front of the machine to show me the applied voltage and the total current. Each of the four MOSFET circuits has a shunt which will give me 75 millivolts for 50 amps flowing through it. The little circuit boards I built earlier bolt right across the shunt itself and on there is a small instrumentation amplifier which comes in different uh, amplification factors uh, times 50, times 100, times 200, etc, etc. Next I built up a test circuit using one of my PIC evaluation boards and had the four shunt amplifier signals going into four of the analog input devices of the PIC itself. With this setup I was able to write code to have the uh, display show me the four separate current signals from each MOSFET device, the uh, total current, the power dissipation, the applied voltage, and uh, other sorted uh, goodies. I didn't want to use the old standard four-line LCD for this uh, project. I was told about these Nexteon displays, which are uh, exactly what I was looking for. They, uh, they also act as a touchscreen but uh, I had to learn how to program the things and make them work with my PIC processors, which uh, was going to be fun. So once I got the code figured out and uh, had something working, it was back to building more circuit boards. I decided to go for two boards. Uh, one is a serial out that feeds the PIC data up to the LCD display, and then the other one is serial in, which takes the uh, serial data from the touchscreen for activation of uh, different functions of the circuits such as uh, fan control. Once I got all that working I had to build something to hold the display assembly on the uh, load circuit itself so built up a front panel for it. It's nothing pretty but it's functional and uh, the uh, current control and the display bolts into this. So this is the new display. Uh, I have a little bit more calibrating to do but uh, the main function is working. This is uh, screen one showing the applied voltage and the total current draw. Uh, screen two sh uh, shows you the total power being dissipated. The fan on off switch. There is a low, low range switch function which isn't being used. The third and last uh, screen shows the individual MOSFET circuits and how much current is flowing through each one of them. So back to the first screen, the main screen, and then over to the second screen to uh, turn the fan circuits on. 
You can hear the four screens on top powering up and the uh, large AC fan on the back blowing air through the main heatsink. So we'll uh, pull some current and show you how the display works here. The current adjust is done now with a 10 turn pot. It uh, just varies the voltage into the uh, inputs of the uh, op amp circuit. I switch over to the third display showing you the individual currents going through each MOSFET circuit and uh, how the loads are being shared. The individual currents are added up in the pick and then totaled to uh, give the main display the uh, total current draw by the whole unit. All in all is working quite well. I'm still waiting for some parts and then I can uh, finish calibrating the uh, complete unit for the higher currents. Here's another demo of the circuit in operation. I'm waiting for some different uh, little amplifiers for the shunts in the circuit to change the scaling and then I can finish calibrating the higher end. It, it goes out of whack about 70 amps or so, but it's still pretty close. So that just about wraps it up for this project. I've got a few more things to do with it and uh, she'll be a functioning uh, heavy duty DC load circuit when I'm all done with it. Thanks for watching. Once again, 73's from Victor Echo 6 Bravo Golf Tangle.